All right, so I lost my hat because most of the driving like crazy lady. So it's quite dusty. First spectating spot was great. There's multiple helicopters, uh, multiple flat tires on some of the rigs, and uh, it was really just a fun spot. What is up everyone? If you're new to the channel, my name is Jesse. The channel is Adventure Endeavor. Obviously you probably know that if you've freaking made it here. Anyways, today is a freaking awesome day. A great weekend, great week. We are super stoked to be out here at King of the Hammers. If you're not familiar with what King of the Hammers is, it's an off-road race where they race rock trails, and high-speed Baja type stuff out here in Johnson Valley. We have come to this race multiple, multiple times, multiple years, and it's always a good time. If you're new to our channel, uh, me and my wife have been full-time RV living here in our Design Imagine for four years now. Well, four years overall, but not in this trailer. We have our TB Grand Wagoneer Jeep, our Ram, and we're here with a bunch of our good friends. Um, we have a lot of our full-time friends here, and then we also have a lot of our hometown friends because we're from Southern California originally. In this video, the goal is to obviously show you some camping, some fun, just hanging out here in the desert with friends. We're gonna try to do our best to go spectate to multiple areas, and um, we might even do some shock valving as well on the old Grand Wagoneer. So this video is going to have a little bit of everything, but mostly it's going to be spectating at King of the Hammers. In the past multiple years, the uh, Hammers have gotten bigger and bigger in the race, and it gets more and more difficult to spectate every year. We typically camp over here off Bessemer Mine Road because we don't like camping in a dust bowl known as Hammer Town. And then we will drive to a few of the spectating areas, kind of check it all out, but it's nice to be off to the side, out of the dust bowl, and then we get to go to the action when we are ready. Yay! Here he comes. Lincoln, what's that car? Who is that? After spectating over at Bessemer Mine Road, we took the short drive over to Turkey Claw. It's one of the rock crawling trails, and as you can tell, even the day before the big race, it was quite busy, but super fun to spectate. All right, so I'm doing my best to film, but it gets very dark very early. And then on top of that, 
I'm having a lot of fun, hanging out with the wife, hanging out with Cub. We have a lot of friends and family here from Southern California. What's going on tonight, babe? You are going to Chocolate Thunder for, what is it, tacos and whatever? Yeah, so Chocolate Thunder is basically one of the trails that they will be racing on tomorrow. And some friends of ours are doing a little meetup over at Chocolate Thunder at 10 o'clock at night. 10 o'clock at night! I'm already sleeping for at least two hours by then. Exactly. And so mom and cub are going to hold down the fort. Uh, I don't want to say she gave me permission. She was kind of more just like, heck, no, I ain't going to be up at 10 o'clock at night. I ain't going. You go. That's it's fun. not really even about the tacos. It's more about just meeting up with friends. And then also, we have some full-time friends who haven't really done hammers that much. So I kind of want to show them around and give them the full experience. Yeah. Are your parents going with you at all? Tonight? I think my dad might come Perfect. tonight, which will be really fun too, but... So it's almost an hour drive off road from our camp because we're off Bessemer Mine Road all the way over to Chocolate Thunder, hang out. It's an hour drive. Eh, I mean, in my Jeep without Lincoln, it's probably less. Oh, okay. But we're going to go do all that, hang out with friends, have some tacos at 10 o'clock at night, which seems weird. And then tomorrow we're going to spectate very early in the morning and we'll pick up tomorrow and we'll let you know what we're doing tomorrow. Sure. I already love it so much. It's taco guy. Free tacos. guys today is the day it is the ultimate race day at king of the hammers it is saturday this is the big saturday race. saturday saturday we'll sell you the whole seat but you'll only need the edge <laughs> <laughs> so we are out here at mile marker 60 uh cooking breakfast we got the scottle uh we're overlanders we some bacon Freelanders. eggs some avocados making little burritos yeah so today is actually spectating. the big race today is saturday february 11th yes sir and uh you can see the ultra four cars behind we were here at the same spot yesterday but they are much much faster today i don't know if we're going to spectate much more because it's very hard to spectate this year yeah so we went into hammertown yesterday uh over to turkey claw and it was crowded and it's only going to be worse today because today is a saturday big race day yesterday was friday and it wasn't even the big race day yet it was crazy oh, yeah. and it's an absolute dust bowl you can't even breathe so we're probably going to spectate here Maybe go film our trucks, kind of play around with our trucks, have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, hope you guys are enjoying this video. We have a babysitter! <laughs> Yay! Oh my god, what are you doing? Are you eating foods? Eating bacon! <laughs> Yum! Getting all the meats! Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll get a chair. Right. Happy boy, happy boy! He's like, give me the bacon! Yeah. Get the bacon, okay. bacon! Many hours later. We're going to talk about how we just did the hammers and how it was crazy busy. Kind of very cold wind. Yeah. Also a lot of dust. It's like I way feel nicer over here. It's breezy today, it is. but it's definitely way less crazy. Way nicer. Yeah, so we're back at our camp, which is about seven, eight miles from Hammertown. And it is just nicer over here. Now I'm going to go with Mike, the Fab Lab, and we're going to go see if we can get the rear of the Jeep working quite a bit better. Um, he's going to watch it go by through the whoops, and then we're going to pull the shocks off, tear them all apart, change the shim shim stacks. Shim stacks. Did you get the cooler? And then put it all back together. Uh, I have the cooler because, do you want the cooler? I don't know. Do I need it? You can have the cooler. Let's get the cooler. Okay. Anyways, that's what I'm going to go do with the Fab Lab now that we've spectated a little bit today. Oh, um, Melissa wanted to show you our cool cooler. Cooler. Our soft cooler. Lipper components. We'll link it in the description below if you want to get one. Stop smacking it. It's firm. Stop it. It's strong. Stop it. I don't know. This section kind of makes both of your guys' trucks look like they're working pretty good, actually. 
It's funny you say that because it looked super composed. Well, you know, when you get up to like 55, 60, and it's just eating it up, but then you're like, wow, I'm going 60 on this crazy whooped out road. You're kind of like, oh, I don't know. Even though it's composed, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if it's just more your mid and your low that's your issue because that I would say that's probably like more towards, that's probably more towards mid and high. And fuck, that's like, uh, you'll look at the video later, you're like, the thing is flat. So, Rear is doing everything it needs to do. Yeah, Jesse, your low speed's just off. It's just too slow. It's too soft. And I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that that's gonna be low speed because of the cantilever. Like that, I would normally say that would be like a mid speed, but you have all that motion ratio built in. You know what's slowing you down is the fact that you don't have a roll cage. Yeah. All right. So we got the ADS is out. They're 12 inch, 2.5s. That's what you don't want to happen, right? The, the smooth bodies coming out? Yeah. and what's the goal here about 25 percent stiffer yeah we're gonna just basically probably go up a whole stack on compression whatever's in here I don't, we don't even really know what's in here yet okay. it's a mystery so this is his his sick vice that goes right in in the old four ranger here this yeah. is mike's daily driver now look at it it's so great okay is that it do we need to tell him anything else uh ads's are the best yeah. What happened is. here? You got some rubbish going on. Oh my god. Rubbish racing. What did we what did you take off? What is this called? This would be like the main wiper seal housing. Sure. This this <laughs> is the wiper seal. This is the actual the main seal of the shock big whatever you want to call it. And then this just holds everything together. You spin this all the way down to tighten everything and then you put the set screw right there and it just keeps everything from basically coming apart. Is your, you know what I really like with these there. ADSs? Is they don't leak. That's <laughs> pretty sweet. You can have them for a few years without them leaking? Is what you're yeah, yeah. I know another company and they and just you, instantly leak I'm everywhere. Like blue sharks? No, <laughs> I would just say the blue sharks. <laughs> So like you, you pull apart, a, you pull apart a, like a king. There'd be like six shims in there only, and they're different thicknesses: twelves, fifteen thousand shims, twenty thousand shims. Where Fox and ADS flow a shit ton more, so you just get all these shims in there that they stack in there. Explain stuff. So what are we? What are we looking at? So this would be the seal head. This would be the spacer to make sure the shaft doesn't come too far out of the body. I'm not really sure. I've never taken this apart, but this would be like probably uh, like a rate plate, but it looks like it's got a cool little taper on it. Mm -hmm. And then there's a shim in there, or a shim. There's like a washer in there, and then all these are your compression shims. This is your piston, and then these are your rebound shims. Crazy. And you got a spacer here to take up some of the slack, and then you got your nut. We're gonna pull it all apart. We've never done this before on this shock. So. Oh, great. Let's see what Yay. You <laughs> and a one, and they're all gonna be twenties. Does that make sense? What we just changed? I'll, I'll explain it to you. So this is the new stack. This is going to be the new stack. So now we're going to have 12 shims total, where before we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because we're going to double up this shim. And some of these shims are 15s right now. We're going to get rid of all. It's going to be solid 20s. You don't think this will be too stiff? It's not going to be too stiff because it's not going to be too stiff because you still have that flutter in the beginning. That's going to be. Oh, okay. it's going to be everything super you want. Super easy crack pressure. It's going to be super easy crack pressure. So, and then as soon as you get into that low speed stuff, that's just like freaking just bottom out immediately. This is going to help. So thirty percent probably. So on dirt roads, it's going to be super smooth and nice because of the flutter, you right? You still got that flutter. You still have that. And then as soon as you get into pressure. big stuff. It's, it's gonna, gonna stiffen, stiffen up, up big time. 100%. Yeah. As yeah. soon as you get into anything altitude changing where you're dropping into a hole or you're going up a hill, the stuff that you just blow through it's travel gonna firm right up. now, it should firm it up. I mean, is this the end all be all? No, but. It's probably still gonna need more. It's a process. You gotta get, get closer, get closer, get closer. Start. A solid start.